that said, I, I, I all, we all know and we all believe uh, why we're here today. Uh, the recent U.S. Attorney's uh, revelation that disclosed that the, the county has entered into a contract with Aptech uh, Industries uh, has shown a glaring and light on the fact that the county's disclosure, transparency, and honesty, quite frankly, to the members and the citizens of this county is, uh, is greatly missing. Today, we are putting forward, or today we put forward a resolution which will cover the hundreds of millions of dollars that this county spends in outside legal counsel and outside contracts. We'll make sure that there is a transparent process so that anyone that chooses to do business, I'm sorry, no, no. <laughs> that chooses to do business in the county, it must be disclosed. Now I just want to go into the past for one second to, before I go into our bill. First, this caucus in 2013, we clocked in a bill that basically would have been, uh, would have required in, re in regards to sewer contracts a panel to review contracts, to be a part of the process, so that before it gets to the legislature, this panel would review the contracts, would have asked questions on why vendors were not selected as part of the process. We were a part of that. Unfortunately, like most bills, most comprehensive good bills, unfortunately that bill in Nassau County went absolutely nowhere. And that is a bill that is now reaching two years in its mark that basically, at this point, is still not even clocked in terms of the legislative calendar. But let's just talk a little bit about our bill. Obviously, uh, when we saw the news in regards to Abtec Industries, we were, one, obviously disappointed, puzzled at the fact that, that there is an outside entity that is doing business with Nassau County and the majority leader in the state senate, his son, is now working in some capacity. Think about that for a second. To this day, and now the news has been out for over a week, but to this day, we still do not know the relationship that Adam Skelos had with Aptec or any influence that he made to county officials the administration, or anyone else. I can speak for the five people here as well as uh, Cela Bino, who is not here, and speak for the county officials on the Democratic side of the aisle. We have had zero contact with Adam Skelos, zero contact with the majority leader, and zero contact from the county executive in regards to any of these matters. But what our, oops, sorry, what our bill will do, what our, what our bill will do is that anyone, whether you're a lobbyist, and let's define what that is, a lobbyist could be a consultant, brokers, agents, employees, attempting to do any type of building or build, uh, sorry, business or wield any influence, it must be disclosed. In addition to that, any communication, emails, phone calls, must be disclosed to the legislature. Also, any contacts, any meetings that were scheduled, anything along those lines, very similar to what the New York Times reported in regards to Adam Skelos having meetings with DPW officials, must also be disclosed. What also must be the case, where I believe our bill goes one step further, the county must disclose, the administration must disclose any party member or elected official that works for their business. What that means is basically, if there's a party official, whether he's a Republican chair or the vice chair or a Democratic vice chair, whatever his position is within that particular entity, that must be disclosed to the county as well. Also, what our package of, of, of items that what our bill does, our resolution, is that it makes sure that the entire disclosure process is conveyed to the legislature. You may want to take a look at our counterparts and what they're proposing. Anything that they're proposing in regards to a disclosure does not mean it's coming to the legislature. 
our information, our bill will ensure that not only is the information disclosed, but it's foilable. So we add one more layer of transparency to our process to make sure it's open. It's unfortunate that the administration submitted a proposal that one, I truly believe, is window dressing when our process at this time opens up the window completely. Lastly, I just want to talk about a little bit the shortcomings of the Republican resolution. The Republican resolution is basically a registry of lobbies, which we wouldn't have a problem with. But in this climate, not knowing the relationship that Adam Skelos or what's being investigated with the majority leader, what relationship, what communication they had, if any, with the administration, that it's, to me, we need to go 10 steps further. We are beyond the process of waiting to see how this bill or how their bill would act. We need to be strong and swift, and we need to ensure we have a process that re-engages in the trust of the Nassau County taxpayer. What it also does, though this bill is uh, a registry, it would require quarterly reports to detailing how any of the lobbying money is received, which, or how lobbyists are, are paid during that particular process, which, again, is, is, is all well and good, but it's a registry. And at the end of the day, none of this information comes to the legislature or to the legislators or any of our, our, our senior staff for a vote. To me, it's, it's, it's unconscionable that we're after, days after the, this news has hit and rocked Nassau County, that we still do not know the relationship that Adam Skelos had or any communication that he has had with this legislature. And our bill, our resolution would fix that. And that is where we are today with that process. Lastly, I know I said lastly before, I do have to say one more point, and then I'll, I'll, I'll open the microphone up to, to our legislators. One of the other resolutions that we have submitted would be a resolution which would not just talk about where we're going forward, it will talk about going back into the past. Any contract that was submitted to the legislature after 2012, whether it be for parks, or purchasing, or DPW, any contract that has been submitted to the legislature, we will require the same level of scrutiny that our bill that we are proposing in terms of going forward be applied to that as well. We need to make sure that not only are we going forward with an honest process, but obviously as it has been revealed, the contract that was passed with Aptec Industries was in 2013. We need to make sure that we scrub that process going backwards to make sure we generate even more transparency and honesty going forward. Uh, that being said, I'll open the mic up to any of our legislators. Legislator, Legislator Jacobs. Well, since the, our minority leader has pointed to it going back also, I'm gonna go back 20 years ago when the legislature was formed. Uh, at that time, we didn't necessarily get anything in, even on the backgrounds of who was part of the principles of the company. That we had corrected, and this was thought about when I was presiding officer also, but everyone said, no, no, let's just redo the whole charter, because the charter of Nassau County has a lot of flaws, a lot of contradictions in it, and it became a massive, massive undertaking. I'm not saying that there was an excuse for not doing it, but it ended up that because each side has only a limited number of people, and the county attorney's office got a hold of it and also agreed, this would take someone concentrating on this for a year. All that being said, we should have. We should have been thinking beyond who the principles are all along. So there's no finger point to the year. I mean, we were all in this for the last 20 years. Republicans were about the majority at the beginning. We were the majority in the middle. Now the Republicans are back in. You know, sometimes it takes something to really give you a wake-up call and realize that although it may have been talked about, although it may have been thought about, the truth of the matter is we need something that we can look at before we vote on something and study and that our staff can study to be certain that there is no possible there's not even a possible scent of a contradiction. So I think we're on the right track. I don't know what the final bill will look like once the two bills are filed, but I would hope it's better to be stronger than weaker. 
we can always adjust if we feel something is not working, but it would be better to have it in there to begin with. So that's a little brief history of 20 years. gave a, a very good uh, summary of what's going on. And what I think really has to happen now is we have to come out with a bill that's strong. And I feel that the, the one that we are submitting is much stronger for a number of different reasons. Um, one, what uh, Kavan mentioned with the year, uh, quarterly disclosure for all lobbyists. And I just don't think that that's good enough to have a But it should also mention the lobbyists, which lobbyists is very big. It's really, if you look at lobbyists, it's some of the lobbies. It's very good. Anybody that's involved with that company. But it should also go on the other side as far as county employees and elected officials. We should have an obligation of disclosing right out in front that we are in any way convicted. Um, so it goes both ways, and I honestly think it will protect the elected officials and the employees. Uh, the, the other, basically what I wanted to say, and what Judy mentioned also, moving forward we really want to um, improve this, but since I've been here probably three and a half years, I've seen this happen on a few occasions. I saw a director of public works come up and present a contract and never mentioned the fact that her sister was the person that, you know, the shareholder of the company that we were awarding the contract to. If that was done on an emergency basis, it was closely disclosed in the background, but a lot of times these emergencies come through and there's at least 30, 40 pages of backup, it's just sometimes it's not as clear. I think that's to be the clearest day if there's any type of conflict like that. The Skelos issue, which our leader also mentioned, it's impossible that we that was not disclosed. I mean that that is something that really has to be, and it has to be very clear, not just quarterly, it has to be a contract. Um, there was also a recent one where a very high up person in the controller's office awarded a contract now to someone, you know, actually his, his relative is also involved. So this is just three examples since I have been here. I'm a newbie. And, and all of these examples are major, huge contracts. And I think that this is what makes elected officials sometimes not look at it. That's our public perception is that there's always some kind of, you know, it's a possibility of us not always making an agenda or not being forthcoming. And I'm proud to be the elected official. I think we all are. And I think that the precautions like these and, and being complete, more than clear, more than clear, has to be part of any contract that's awarded, especially with the public money, which is what we do with our county. So, again, I think it will protect us, it will improve our image, and it will protect the employees of the county. But I do, again, our bill and the administration's bill. And if we're going to do it, we should absolutely do it right. And again, I am very, very happy and relieved to see that we're moving in this direction. Thank you. I would like to first uh, welcome everyone, and also I would like to thank my colleagues, and especially my leader, um, Juan Abraham, for uh, this resolution. Uh, Nassau County is in desperate need of transparency and accountability in its contracting procedures. I have been a member of the Rules Committee ever since 2014. I was not a member of the Rules Committee at the time the particular contract in question with Abtech Industries was awarded in 2013. Had I been on the Rules Committee at that time, I would have asked some very pertinent questions. The same questions that I asked before other contracts that are brought before the county. We must truly understand and know what a contract entails, who's involved. The legislation or the resolution that our caucus is asking for simply asks for that information. We need enough information in order to make wise decisions. And unfortunately, the administration has uh, benefited from a procedure in which there isn't any real clear understanding of these contracts and important information uh, that is relevant in order to avoid uh, favors and other forms of, uh, of political partisanship. So I thank the, uh, the, 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 our colleagues for presenting this resolution, and I give the microphone back to our leader. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, it is my hope that this piece of legislation will go 
some way towards restoring some of the public trust. Headline after headline, you know, you see the public trust in our public, in our government is eroding, and I really hope that this will restore some of that trust. Um, as a member of the Rules Committee for 20 years, I can say to you when ABJAC came before us, I think people who have been in the legislature know the kind of questioning we usually do. But you also have to understand, we check on, the, on who the principals are. That's not necessarily done on the floor. It would be brought up if we see something that raises a red flag. So, you know, now we're saying that, okay, when you're in, on the floor of the legislature, ask the question, ask who's behind the scenes, ask who might have had any, anything to do with this contract. That's, you know, hindsight's always great. But I have to tell you, in support of the Rules Committee, um, we always ask the questions, and we're certainly very aware of the importance of what we're voting on, because the contracts only come before rules. This opens everyone's eyes, and although it's good to know who the principles are, and the companies seem to be valid, and we asked Public Works, and they said even though they weren't the lowest bidder, they were the most qualified, and that they met, met all the qualifications that they had listed. Um, bottom line is, Something slipped through our fingers, and that's the loophole that we have to close, not to allow things to slip through our fingers. But as far as members of the Rules Committee, let me tell you, we, we work hard, and we do read, and we do listen, and we do look into it. This was something, unless someone comes forward by having now a law in place, we can know it, we can know it. Okay. Thank you, Legislator Jacobs. Uh, at this point, I'll, I'll open it up to, to any possible questions. Before I, I open it up and do that, I just want to talk about one more detail uh, in regards to our legislation. Um, one thing about our legislation that it does is there's, there's been some call to scrutiny in regards to the, the RFP process, in regards to how the criteria is determined, how the scoring is determined. Uh, from our standpoint, our legislation, our resolution, would also address the fact that we want to have that information disclosed to us as well. How that criteria was generated and how that criteria was determined and how eventually uh, the proposal for that is up. Oh, thank you. Uh, we would also want that part, part of the RFP process. Uh, for the procurement process, it's important that we, we identify who introduces the vendor to the county and to the department and to the office, specify whether uh, the bid conference or the site the visit that was held and attend on behalf of the vendor and so on as well for the, the, the sealed bids and the RFP process which is a much larger scope so that being said I'll, I'll be happy to, to open it up to any questions from, from members of the press. Can you tell us what laws are on the books right now that are That, that lobbyists have in communications with any county officials, none of that's being, none of that's disclosed, and and that's a big problem on why, obviously, this information in regards to Aptech, Adam Skelos is now being uh, a part of a U.S. attorney investigation. Yeah, one of the things that Legislator Jacobs is, is mentioning is obviously, is as members of of the legislature. Uh, it is appropriate that we recuse ourselves from matters that are conflicts of interest or perceived conflicts of interest. Uh, both Legislator Jacobs and I uh, have positions at Joshua Long Island Jewish, which uh, we make it a point, uh, whether it's an item that comes before us in the legislature, uh, we recuse ourselves from any debate or discussion. Uh, that, is, that really ties into my last point in regards to our resolution. Uh, making sure that the entities that are doing business with the county, that the county is disclosing those party positions or those party offices to 
the county so that they can make a full decision. Legislator Jacobs and I do the responsible thing, but we're not always confident that, that everyone else is. Is it your belief that if a simple registry were to pass, that based on the timing of the disclosures, there would still be cases where contracts would come up to vote and they would have a way of not disclosing? Absolutely. A, 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 a registry is just that. It's basically requiring people who, who do business in the county that lobby um, for business for, on behalf of their clients in the county to be registered. But the bottom line is the registry doesn't go far enough. It doesn't disclose the communication. It doesn't even disclose the, the influence that could possibly be revealed. It doesn't disclose the, the meetings that may be taking place between uh, uh, elected officials, county officials, and the county. From that standpoint, that information needs to be brought to the to the forefront. Legislation will kind of propose. Oh, maybe a two-liner. I'm sorry, I, I didn't uh, hear you. Oh, sorry. On um, what the legislation will propose, maybe just like your key points that you want, like all in one or two sentences. <laughs> well, I mean, the best way I can say it is that this bill will ensure transparency. It will ensure that the, the people's money, uh, the hundreds some odd million dollars that we spend in outside contracts, goes through a process where every bit of information is disclosed to the public and disclosed to the legislature to make a formative decision. Can I just add something? Um, you know, like what you didn't come on mentioned, the term recuse yourself is used kind of loosely right now. But what this will do is that this will make it a lot more clear. For instance, I've been told other people have recused themselves from contracts, but we don't, we're not advised to that. So it's very important to have a, a standard form of doing it. It used to be supposed to go before the ethics board, which might not be as practical. This will make it practical and it will make it clear and we'll all be able to read it and see it and know who exactly we're dealing with. So one liner, we just need a, a resolution that will create an affirmative obligation on the part of administration to disclose the beneficiaries of certain Oh, Thank you. Sorry,